Okay, guys and gals, we're going to get rolling here with Canadian Solar. We've got uh, Bob and Travis here to make the presentation. Um, and if you can possibly hold some of your questions towards the end so they can get through the presentation and we'll answer everything at the end, that would be great. So here we go, Bob. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Bob with Canadian Solar. My role at Canadian Solar has actually changed a little bit. I'm handling distribution nationwide. So proud to be working with our folks here at Rexel. And, uh, and if, if you do have questions, please just jump in, hesitate, don't hesitate to ask, and uh, we'll get started. Today we're here actually to go over <coughs> um, the residential AC integrated panel that we have. Um, Rexel is going to be having these in stock in the next couple weeks, so we thought it was a good time to give you guys some exposure. And then uh, I'll give you a little background on, on Canadian Solar just so you understand the module company itself and where we're headed. And this is Travis, he's our tech guy and he'll do a deeper dive into the, uh, <clears throat> into the technology. So believe it or not, we actually are a Canadian company. Everybody asks you, we got ties to Canada. We do, we were founded in Canada in 2001, incorporated there, <clears throat> and we do have a manufacturing facility there. We have one in, uh, in China and also in Canada. We're publicly traded since 2006. <clears throat> the headquarters is in Ontario, and predominantly the, the uh, um, panels that are done up there are the ones for the Ontario Fit content. <clears throat> so we were risen to the third largest module manufacturer. <clears throat> that was in 2012. <clears throat> and, um, oh, excuse me, I got something cut. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> so we talk about bankability. <clears throat> Does anybody know what the actual definition of bankability is? Neither did I, actually, when I got started. So it, it, it's really, will, it, will the company fund large projects when uh, you're submitting bids and want to do large or leasing programs? So <clears throat> we've got the size of the company. We're about 11,000 people worldwide. And we also the quality of the product. The strength of the, quad, the, the, the company is the financial strength. We'll talk about the balance sheet. And the market adoption. We actually installed about 2.5 gigawatts uh, worldwide last year of modules. And our global footprint, we have 16 offices worldwide and the product and the reliability of the warranty. So we'll talk about the warranty. We have a 25 year non-cancelable um, third party insurance. So regardless of what happens to Canadian solar, you guys are covered and so is your customers. That actually is a prepaid premium. So again, if anything happened to the solar industry or Canadian solar, it's, uh, you're, you're covered. So here's the financial strength. This is just a snapshot. You, you, know, you hear the horror stories about module manufacturers and the consolidation in the industry. We are actually what we consider probably the most financially, fiscally fit, I should say, among the other ones. If you look at, whoops, this is uh, Canadian solar, Henwa. Trina, SunTech, and Yingli. We actually control our operating expenses to the point where we actually will be profitable in 2012, which is saying a lot for, for what's going on in the industry right now. And the industry and the uh, operating expenses are really low, and we really just run a tight ship. Um, it's the joke actually running around the offices. If there was an ugly contest in the module world, we'd finish last. So we're pretty happy about that. So we've actually climbed up the food chain quite a bit. In 2008, you could see we were actually 12th on the, uh, the list of module manufacturers. And based on our, our performance in Q3 2012, we've risen to uh, third um, in the module chain. So we're considered bankable. We're basically the tier one and top four module manufacturers worldwide now. So we're here to talk about, that's a little bit about Canadian solar, the history of it. If uh, you have any questions, please let me know at the end. But this is, we're here to talk about the residential AC. And actually, I want to turn it over to Travis right now, where he can just dive, do, go into a deeper dive into the, uh, into the technology. Thank you. Just press that one. So everybody here who's installed a microinverter knows why we use microinverters today. It's really the shading is the problem, different orientations. And you got the uncontrollable shading that you have, utility poles, neighbor's trees, things you can't move. Um, so 
we looked at a microinverter because of this, this issue. And really for us, the reason we looked at putting a microinverter on the market or, is because we looked at the main player out there right now, which is the Enphase microinverter. Sorry. <laughs> Enphase uh, microinverter. We noticed they, are, they have a lot of shortcomings. You know, and those shortcomings are the reliability of the optolytic capacitors, the electrocouplings that they, he was talking, that Royer was talking about before. And then also, because it is an AC module, we are have the same temperature rating as the panel itself. So it's up to 85 degrees Celsius. So you get a higher temperature before it starts cutting. Uh, the power class, um, what's out there right now is the 215 for the main standalone. We're gonna be at uh, 240 watts and we have a scalable technology, meaning we can firmware scalable the uh, microinverter from 240 up all the way up to 300 watts. And then the communication, again, we use a Zigbee protocol rather than PLC. And the biggest advantage that we have of this is a pre-assembled module. So we are pre-assembled in the factory. You get it as one unit. The microinverter is already installed to the panel. And then also, we come from one warranty. So you're going to call Canadian Solar no matter what is wrong with the system. You can and we'll determine if it is the microinverter or the panel itself. And we can do that remotely, so you don't have to physically go out to the job, troubleshoot the system. You can just give us a call, we'll check the monitoring out, and, let, and determine what the problem is. So it saves on your truck rolls. And then two, we'll talk about it more in the road, but we have a 25-year warranty on the entire system. So we're positioning this as a residential AC, so we're looking from below 30 kW. And we are typical for the string inverters, they're up to the 10 year. So we are matching what Enphase is doing with the 25 year warranty. Um, again, different orientations, different tilts, uh, different string sizes, we're able to eliminate that with a microinverter. They come out 240. 240? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we'll talk about that a little more in the road. And feel free to answer questions. We won't take the full hour, so feel free if a question jumps up, just ask and we'll, we'll go through it. So a little bit about what we have. So we took out the, the electrolytic capacitors and we put in thin film capacitors. And reliability is a huge issue in the microinverter right now. So we took those out to be more reliable. We have the scalability up to 300 watts, and then also the higher temperature range. So what we're offering right now is a 250 watt module. A couple different flavors, it's gonna come in an all black mono, black back sheet, black frame mono cells, and it's gonna come in a black frame poly. And the poly is gonna have a white back sheet, black frame poly cells. Uh, for those who have ordered from us, you'll know that a little change on the ordering is that we are at now at 22 modules rather than 24 in a pallet. <coughs> That's because the microinverter sticks out about two millimeters from the frame to keep the heat away from the cells. No, what we do is put a single-sided board on it to revert the heat away from the cells. So it's just conventional cooling and a five millimeter gap that helps for that. So what we do in the factory is on the front right, top right of it, we will use four self-threading screws to connect the microinverter to the module frame. And with this, it basically will bond the microinverter and the module together for its equipment ground. We'll talk a little bit more about that down the road. We use Zigbee communication, so it is a wireless mesh grid. 
And then we do have the lead indicator to let you know if, it, if there's any issue with the microinverter itself. So a little bit on the components. We have our, obviously the microinverter, we have our gateway that can hold up to 50 AC modules. And based on the 250 watt module, it's 12 and a half kW system. And then also we have a repeater for the instances where you'd need it. Um, mainly metal roofs is the only time you'll need it or a very long uh, communication run. Uh, the trunk cables that we have, we have two separate trunk cables. One comes for portrait, there's 75 in a reel, and it goes to one millimeter, or one meter, and then two meters for landscape, and that will be 50 connectors in a, in a reel. We have the termination end cap, we have this cable joiner, usually used for when you're transitioning from a portrait to a landscape module or vice versa, so you don't have to put in a junction box or anything. We have the female cap. If you guys noticed, uh, we use the same trunk cable as Power One. <laughs> so the weatherproof cap, same thing if you have to skip a connector, uh, usually going around the skylight or a chimney, um, or really, where I think you use the most is when you're doing portrait, two linear rows or three linear rows of portrait, the cable is not long enough to get to the next row. So you put the cable cap on, wire it up, uh, do some wire management, and move on to the next connector. We also have male and female connectors, and those for you, if you'd like to build a jumper, we have that available as well. We don't <coughs> offer the wire because we couldn't make it cost competitive. All your local electrical stores will most likely have this product. It's just three number 12s in a sun jacketed cable. These female and male caps are, real, are only used for the male and female connector. And those are used if at the end of the day you're not able to finish that connection. You put the female cap on or male cap and then take it off the next day and, and put the connection in. So this is, these caps are reusable. So when you purchase them, you just purchase a little bit of them, make sure you keep a stock in your truck. So if you can't finish the job, you can, you can put the connector on, the cap on. So a little overview of the assembly. So we can go, based on the 250 watt modules, we can go 16 on a branch circuit for a 20 amp breaker. And for this, so what we use is those self-threading screws uh, in these four areas here. Well, basically, it bond it together, and through the NEC code and the UL 1741, that re we meet the requirements to bond the microinverter to the frame of the module. And then from there, we use the trunk cable's ground to connect to the microinverter, and your equipment ground is ran through your trunk cable. So all you'll have to ground on the system is your racking. And as all microinverters are, we're NEC 2011 arc fault compliant, which means we won't have to have a, a arc fault detection for a DC system, because we are AC. Little information on where you would use the components. Uh, you'd have the weatherproof cap used when, when you're skipping a connector. You have your jumpers down here if you want to uh, make a long jumper cable. And then uh, the cable joiner is not on here, but it's usually used if we were switching this one from a uh, portrait to a landscape. You'd put the cable joiner right in the middle so you don't have to put in a junction box and transition that trunk cable. So typically right after the system, you would do like your normal installation, put in a junction box and transition it into a THWN-2, your house wire. So in this trunk cable, we have only three wires, three number 12s. We have two powers and a ground. We don't need a neutral because we are a true 240 volt microinverter. So what that means is it doesn't reference the positive or negative. So it, we don't need a neutral, so we're exempt from GEC as well. So no more number six on the roof, no more number 10 copper other than your racking system itself. So our monitoring system is completely free for the full, full life of your system. Uh, it's gonna be 
Like a lot of the systems out there today, it's going to be module level performance, module level monitoring. We do have an iPhone app that's in production right now. So what it does is we basically, from the roof, the system goes to your wireless router. Your gateway is connected to that and then goes from your internet to the different user interfaces. Go ahead. So there's no more ground that it's all grounded in the system? So no That's correct. So your EG, the only thing you'll have to do is the racking. Because the, the panels won't be bonded to the, the racking. No. So you can ground, so basically what you're grounding is you're grounding the microinverter to the frame with the seamless screws. And then, because those two are connected, we can use the ground in the trunk cable as the equipment ground of the module itself as well. Which, which connector? Okay. No, they're not. They're they're crimped. Yeah, they'll crimp. They you take them apart. You have you'll crimp them inside, screw them down, so they'll be good. Yeah. Um, well, it all depends on your 120% roll. Um, if you have a 200 amp breaker on your service panel, then you can put, if it has a 200 amp breaker with a 200 amp bus bar, you can put 40 amps of solar on there. So you can put two strings. Two strings of 16, which is, what, 8 kW. Yeah, and what I, I mean, I used to install, I installed in Northern California for about four years, and what I usually did is you can get an upgraded box, you can go with a 225 bus bar rating, put your 200 amp breaker in there, and then you have 70 amps of solar. So easy solutions for a, an upgrade. So this is a little information on the monitoring, the, gre the mesh grid. And what it does is the group of models, modules will speak with each other, and then each group will send it over to the next group, and then the closest module to the gateway will send all the information to the gateway. Is that going through the wire or through the air? That's going through the air. It's a Zigbee wireless communication. So it's a trend that we see starting that uh, PLC will be gone soon. There's a lot of disturbance that you see in the in the household, if you don't have it on the right breaker going to the system, it doesn't work. Um, if you get noisy communication lines, it will go down. So it's a more reliable system. A little information on the Zigbee. Uh, we had a bunch of people ask about uh, what Hertz it was, so we put a slide up on the Hertz for the, uh, the communication. It's a little snapshot of our monitoring. So this is the system overview. So we can, and one of the good things about this system is we can compare, this would be say a west facing module, an east facing module, and a south facing module. So you can use some of these in your presentations to your customers and you can compare the west to the east to the south and let them know with true, true, I guess true uh, numbers to let them know that prove to them that south is obviously the right way to go. As I had a couple, I was doing an install on a south facing roof. I look over at a neighbor's house and they have it on their north roof. That was three years ago. And now, you know, people are a little more knowledgeable in the solar, but three or four years ago, you could do anything and they wouldn't know, know the difference. <laughs> no, not anymore. So, 
So here's a quick, this is a quick view. It'll show you, you know, financial benefit, and you, that's an input that you put in, so de depending on your area. And then your KW, and then the, you know, the GUI that everybody likes to see is how many trees you've planted, how many miles you've saved, all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't, do you guys have any homeowners who really care about that? Yeah, because I never had that either. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So if you could limit the information, you would less is more. They don't care about the trees. Yeah. So, so what we're. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're doing right now is we're going to develop a different view. Right, right now we have the installer view, which shows all your jobs that you have on there. We have our view that shows everything, and we have the install or the end user view. So what we're going to do is we're going to develop a, a different view where it just shows the quick view, because we had a lot of our distributors asking if we can limit what the customer sees. So we'll have that option down the road. We can give them just a quick view of what the system's doing rather than the individual module and that you get calls constantly from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's your, well, it shouldn't be that hard. It's just the input, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would. It would. So one of the good things, too, about our gateway, we already talked about uh, comparing module to module. One of the good things, too, is if, if you don't want your customer to see it, you can take the gateway out. The gateway is only needed for configuration. So if they don't, the customer doesn't want monitoring, you can have one that you have in your truck, you can commission the system and take it away. It's a little more reporting. Right now it's really limited on the reporting and we're still trying to determine what we really want to give the customer, how many reports that we really want to give them. How many calls do I want to get on monitoring is really the question. How many do you guys want to get? How many Rexel's going to get? Because before, when I was doing systems, I would half of my day was answering monitoring questions. And it gets a little annoying, I have to say. <laughs> so here's a little snapshot of our benefits compared to competitor B and competitor A. Competitor B is AC modules out there today. So, and competitor A it was the, the big guy who's out there now, the standalone. NX or NX uh, in face. So we have the integrated solution. Competitor B standalone. Obviously, they will have to install it to the racking system. Uh, we use the thin film capacitors. Uh, really, in phase, they are a little low on the technology standpoint right now. We have the threshold of 85 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have the seamless screwing for the grounding. And then where we start differentiating ourselves other is our, our power class. So we have that scalable class from 240 to 300. So what that does is, you know, four years down the road, if someone's installed a system with 250 watt modules and you got a 240 watt AC microinverter, in four years, we're probably going to be at least 275, or at least higher. So there we can firmware update the microinverter to a 260 or 280. Nothing that has to be done. We could do it through the, through the gateway itself. Firmware update it so you can get the max power out of that module. And then also when there is a warranty issue, four years from now we're probably not going to have any 250s in stock. So we can power pack that roof and use everything available from that module. Yes. Yeah, so down the road, if, you know, because this is based on a 250 watt module and it's at a 240 watt AC microinverter. So if down the road 
you have a 270 watt panel on a 240 watt AC microinverter, you're going to be clipping down to that 240. So we can scale it up to a 260, 280, so you can power, you can get all the power out of that module. Uh, it's price for us. Price is the biggest thing. Uh, there will be a little cost for a higher watt microinverter. It's a software. It's a software. Yeah. So we can max, we can mission match 60 and 72 cell modules. Not a problem. No different SKUs. Um, it's same trunk cable system. Nothing changes. Uh, we also have the Zigbee communication, and then we have the uh, three wires with no neutral. So we save a lot on your install side of it. So instead of taking the package out, you do your wire management, you put your ground lug in the module, you take it out, and you're basically done. Put it on your racking system, lay your cabling down, and move on to your next system. So I did a little cost analysis on it. And on based on like a 4KW system, you save, and it's very conventional, two hours and about 100 bucks in two hours of labor and about 100 bucks in material. It's obviously a lot higher than that, but um, you can save time. And what can you do with two hours on another job? So this is a solar bridge. And they had a, so what they do right now is they have their trunk cable connected with their module itself. But the unfortunate thing about that is you have to buy a pallet of portrait, a pallet of landscape. So you're going to have, rather than using just a different trunk cable, you're going to have to buy more modules. So a comparison for us, this is kind of just going through an overview of it. We have the 25-year warranty that's backed by Canadian Solar. And we, right now, are working for the reassurance warranty that Bob was talking about, the 25-year reassurance third party. It's not currently for the microinverter. It's only for the module. And we are in discussions with our insurance company. And they just want to see a little more volume out there before we can get that insurance. It's a power guard. It's three different companies. Power guard is the main. And again, what Bob said, it's prepaid. So it's nothing you guys have to worry about. It. We, we prepay it. And if something happens to solar or something happens to Canadian solar, you can ensure your customers that they have a 25-year warranty. But they're not on the combined? Not yet. They want to see more volume out there before. The uh, probably by the end of the year. No, it would it would backdate. It will backdate. Yes. Back. Yeah. Go ahead. Is that insurance a standard practice, or is that something you're just It is not standard. I don't. I haven't heard of any other mon, uh, module manufacturers that do it. Um, I think I've heard of one, but no one I've recognized. Uh, no. And that's every module that you guys have. Every module. Yeah. So again, on this, it, the module will still be covered right now, and then the microinverter down the road will be covered. So a little over the warranty again, we got 25 years on the microinverter, and it is it either works or it doesn't. We have a two-year warranty on the gateway and repeater, and the reason why it's only two years, it's a brand new technology for the gateway, so we want once we use a little bit more and see a little bit of what it's doing, the warranty will most likely increase. And then the module has its 25-year warranty with the third-party reassurance. And for this uh, residential AC module, we set up a 1855 number. So what, that, what it does, it will go actually directly to my line so you can have someone to talk to in person. Because when you're on a roof or you have an issue, it's better to talk to someone. It's a little overview. 
of what we talked about. So we have the savings, and the savings really from the grounding, from the joint certification, and the labor of it being pre-installed. Uh, we have a faster return on investment because we're using uh, a high 250 watt module and then we're, use, we're not throttling back at the normal rate of 65 for most microinverters. We go all the way up to 85 degrees, which matches the panel. That's uh, 189 compared to like 150. Well, if you look, if you base it at like uh, the PTC rating, so a PTC rating of a 250 is about 230, so you're going to be losing 15 watts when it's at peak. So the roadmap that we kind of have going on right now is we're going to be introducing our high efficient 60 cell modules that's going to go up to 275, 280 watts for this as well. That's going to be probably around the end of the year. Uh, we're looking into possibly doing a standalone microinverter, and then also the reassurance will be coming at the end of the year. Some of the uh, high efficiency modules in the two manufacturers make a smaller module, it's like six inches smaller. Yep. Inches. Talking about SunPower? <laughs> yeah. Uh, are, is your high efficiency one going to be the same size? Same exact dimensions. Nothing will change. What we do is use a metal, metal wrap through technology, kind of like what SunPower does and transforms the bus bars from the front side to the back side. More surface area, more light to gain in, more power. And do they have more efficiency because of patents or just because they geared up to manufacture that? I think it's because they geared up to manufacture it. And then they, they have the higher cost that allows them to use that type of module. So the scalability, I think, will be a big thing in the future that uh, once we get the panels up to 300 watts on a 60 cell, or that uh, scalability will be big. And then, uh, really, the Zigbee communication is uh, big for the industry. You go to a wireless communication rather than PLC. The bundled warranty, which is nice because you have no finger pointing. You don't call in phase and they go, hey, it's your panel. And you call your panel manufacturer and go, no, it's in phase. So you call us, we'll figure out what it is, and we'll send you the right product. And then the good, we also have the ability to mix and match portrait and landscape. All you'll have to do is you'll use that cable joiner and transition from a portrait trunk cable to a landscape portrait, or trunk cable. And then two, um, the reliability, we took out the optolytic capacitors and we took out the iso isocouplings. So, and then two, bankability. Uh, we are a large company. Uh, we're one of the top module manufacturers out there today. Worldwide, we are huge. Um, United States, we're really still kind of getting into the market here. We're starting to get more response from the US market. So that's, that's all we have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you get stuck on an in call, you call me. That 1855 number comes directly to me. Um, comes to either my landline or if I don't answer that, it goes to my cell phone. Um, I have a, about four years' experience of installing, so I have enough knowledge that I can remotely help you. Or if there's something that we need, that there's a bigger issue, I can come down. Help you out. Yeah, just to reinforce Travis, as the uh, product specialist for Rexel, I'm available. Myself and the manufacturers, we're here to, to guide you. You guys ask the questions, we we'll bring you the answers. Now. We'll keep you moving forward. Yep. So, really appreciate your nope. presentation. Oh, you got this one real quick. Great. So, the whole idea of the reassurance is that because in the past, there's been manufacturers that made uh, modules and then all of a sudden they've got them. Well, it's making the end user feel comfortable that down the road, no matter if they buy this system now or later, that it's going to be covered no matter what happens to the industry or the company you're buying it from. So once the install is done, you know, the, the homeowner then would get some kind of an insurance packet. 
So, yeah, it's a simple one pager that shows you who you would contact if Canadian Solar ran out of business. Go ahead. Well, it depends on your installation, but most likely it will. It will clip. At, at low temperatures or high temperatures? Or it's going to be at high temperatures and low temperatures. Uh, it's going to be a... They're 9 watts above what they say? The panel itself is 250. The microinverter is 240. So it, it's going to start clipping at around 245. So it has about a 5 watt tolerance. Yeah. Unless you're in Colorado in a high cold temperature with high light. No. We have Siemens here who will be discussing the Enphase product next. So maybe that'll answer some questions. Real quick, I got a question for you guys and this will help out our stocking distributors. Um, as Travis mentioned, we're going to have the two flavors. The 250 Poly with the black frame. I'm going to go back to it real quick. And then the, uh, the 250 Mono All Black Show of hands, who's uh, going to be selling more all black versus just the poly? Well, the, the efficiency is the same. Is price? There is a There's price a difference because the back sheet's more expensive and also the mono cells are more expensive. I won't get into the difference of pricing, they can discuss that, but there is a delta. So is it, does it make a difference as to how much more? Or is this Southern California just an all black market versus poly? Cost, isn't it? No. You had an early slide of big diamonds on the face of the panel. Is that still at the other side of the split slide? Well, you, that is be, because, a, I mean, a mono cell is grown as a single cell, so you can't get a square out of it. So it gets into an octagon, basically. So is that just the white batch sheet? Yeah. Yeah. So if you turn that over, you'll see those same diamonds, but it's hidden by, it's hidden by a black back sheet. No. So I'm hearing. Well, those are out. In well. Southern California <laughs> cost is more effective. Northern California, they might do it because it's better environmentally. It you know, helps them grow weed or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you guys don't do that down here? <laughs> our biggest thing is our HOAs. Right. They want all black. Yeah. They won't, won't let us install a white back sheet. Yep. What we found is when we slap the black frame on it, it's actually, and the lower cost of the, the poly seems to be a little more embraced uh, with, because of the cost. And aesthetically still looks almost as good as the all black. Is it blue or It's a dark it's navy a blue, dark. actually. Yeah. We've got some sample modules around. Mm. So if we need to take a look at it for the presentation. Yeah. yeah, so what Bob is saying is, you know, the poly modules are full squares, six by six inch squares. And the back sheet that you see is only about 1.5 millimeter between. So from the roof on a two-story roof, probably won't even notice, other than the blue. Are those panels warehouse spirit in San Diego? I mean, do you want them, they're FOB here, or yeah. attached where if they're what? This is one of our main hubs, so we'll move it here, whatever you need. So you're delivering for the three to it, or like we did that? Depending on the location, depending on the location. Are you talking to him? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Depending on location, you know, for your sales representative for Rexel, they can discuss that with you. Okay. And feel free if you guys have any other questions, I'll be here all day. Well, you said something about if there were a problem, you'd come down. Where are you located? I'm in uh, Northern California. So I'm in the Bay Area. So it's an hour and a half flight. Thanks, Thank Bob, you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.